Uh, Socrates, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Benjamin. Really appreciate it. Great to be on. Yeah, you bet. I got, I got to ask you, uh, uh, how's Aristotle doing? Just kidding. You know what? When we find him, I'll let you know. <laughs> now, my first question uh, pertains to the platform. Now, can you tell us what is unique and different about it and why cannabis consumers would want to go to the Jane Technologies platform as opposed to the OCS or whatever uh, platform they reside in provincially? Yeah, ab absolutely. So really what it boils down to is we try to make shopping online for cannabis, at least here in the United States, as simple and as straightforward as shopping online for just about everything else in this world. So if you look at the other online marketplaces that exist in this world, call it Amazon for any other retail item, Grubhub, for instance, for, for ordering from restaurants, Airbnb is a great example for when you want to find a place to stay for the weekend. Um, the, the consumer has purchasing power every step of the way. So to use Amazon as a, as a natural example, the last item you, you purchased on Amazon, you probably typed in a search term as broad or as specific as, as you would want. You were able to curate down that search, be recommended products based on how other people just like you are shopping. And then ultimately you had the purchasing power to compare by price, read reviews from actual validated verified consumers, and then make a purchase from a local or, or, or a seller of your choice. Ultimately you become almost a, a, a pseudo subject matter expert in a matter of minutes on the retail item or the restaurant or the or the you know apartment building that you're looking to stay in and, and that's the shopping experience that we're able to provide here in the US okay do you uh, do you have a value add service where you provide delivery um, to your consumer uh, where they can you know not only purchase the bud but get it delivered within the same day as opposed to waiting through the post Oh, absolutely. Um, so in the states, as you know, each uh, disparate state market has different regulations around delivery. Um, in a state like California, for instance, where delivery is available, what we do now is we enable brick and mortar stores to fulfill uh, the order via delivery. So we have fulfillment software that works with uh, other fleet management solutions. So again, it, it just goes back to providing the consumer with as much optionality, with as much purchasing power as, as possible, so that if there is a consumer who says, hey, only show me the products that can actually get delivered to my home, we enable that. And um, just to be clear, we don't ourselves fulfill the last mile, meaning we don't have drivers that take the product and deliver it, but we certainly enable those brick and mortar dispensaries to fulfill where it's legal, um, the, the online orders that, that want to be delivered to their home and we do so uh, with relative ease. So who's your primary competition right now and are you located in Canada or are you just uh, specifically a US platform currently? Right now, we're, we're specifically in the United States. We're headquartered in um, Santa Cruz, California. Um, in terms of direct competition, there, there's really no direct competitor that we've come across, meaning there is no true online marketplace that allows the consumer to do a byproduct search and compare other like sellers against that single product. Um, that being said, obviously, those that are operating in the e-commerce space um, are ones that we consider to be indirect competitors. And we segment the market in, in three separate ways. One, we, we call is the Yelp model. This is your static directory listing um, out there. There are, there are some more older software companies that have a directory listing of certain dispensaries or certain products, but there's no real-time integration. Um, there's no automation of e-commerce. So really, we, we compete quite nicely against the, the quote-unquote Yelp model. Um, the other model that we compete with quite well is um, what we call actually the Shopify model. And for that really is, you know, if you think about what Shopify has, has been done, it's a, and it's a great company, and I know uh, it was founded up in, uh, up in Canada, they, they provide e-commerce more for the direct-to-consumer model, um, where if you're, you know, have a, uh, if I'm a craftsman and I sell beer koozies, for instance, I would love to use a Shopify plugin on my website and be able to just automate e-commerce um, direct to consumer. Why that doesn't necessarily apply so well down here in the United States is that there's a lot of brick and mortar stores. And in the United States, product turnover is 40% week to week, which is quite astounding. So if you think about it, the products that you're seeing on a store shelf at any given dispensary in the US 
four out of 10 of those products won't be the exact same the next week. And so product turnover is extremely, um, a, a significant variable in the equation of creating a, a well-oiled machine that is you know, operating at the dispensary. And what we provide now is full automation, meaning every single product that's in your inventory system is in real time showing up on your online menu and then vice versa, if a customer you know, orders a bunch of product and that inventory goes below a certain safety stock or inventory zero, it'll automatically be removed um, from that online menu. So uh, we do things quite differently than, than the indirect competitors that we, that we mentioned, but um, I think there's definitely room for other e-commerce solutions. We, we do what we do and we think we do it quite well. Okay, so what are your plans for going public, uh, if you have any, if any? Uh, right now, of course, you're a private uh, enterprise, and uh, I'm assuming that that will be dependent on your capital requirement needs, whether you can uh, raise enough uh, privately uh, through the venture capital channels or uh, expand elsewhere, and you know, then have to deal with the disclosures and everything that goes along with sure. the capital markets, the expenses. So where are you at right now in terms of expansion, and do you foresee um, perhaps you know, filing an IPO at some point uh, to increase your uh, expansionary uh, ambitions? Great question. So for us, really, it's, it's our immediate focus is to, is to grow our footprint um, in a sustainable manner. <clears throat> and right now, we've done a great job at expanding our footprint. We now have become the fastest growing and largest B2C marketplace, online marketplace here in the cannabis industry in the US over 600 dispensaries using, utilizing our software across 21 state markets, and that's been accomplished in about 20 months. So right now, we are built, and we consider ourselves as a fast-growth tech company. Um, we have had no real need yet to, to go to the public markets. There's a, a significant interest among the private investment base here in the U.S. and, and quite frankly, globally interested in our software as it can scale in a very sustainable way and has proven um, to be successful so far, at least in the in the past 20 months. That being said, though, you know, in my opinion, cannabis is the fastest growing industry across the world, and for us, we we want to be um, having a seat at the table not only here in the U.S. or Canada, but also in Europe, in Asia, perhaps. And, and as a software company, you know, we're afforded the opportunity to move quite quickly. And if that's the case, and we do see opportunities. We will seek to to accelerate our growth uh, through funding, whether that's through the public markets or private. Sounds like a great story, Socrates. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, my my um, my path to the cannabis industry is unique uh, in the sense that I actually never consumed cannabis for much of my adult life. I was in the U.S. Army uh, for my 20s. Uh, I got out of the the military after deploying to Iraq. Um, and I, I don't say cannabis saved my life, but I certainly say it, it has changed my life. And after talking to so many of my military friends and, and, and hearing very similar stories of how cannabis was able to help them, you know, we decided to go and build something that can provide safe, legitimate, accountable access to this plant and this product for others like me and, and, and others, hopefully, you know, in Canada and across the world. I think um, in Canada, they do an unbelievable job and one that here in the U.S., we're looking at to replicate, hopefully, of taking care of their veteran population and allowing them to have access to this medicine to help them reintegrate into society and, and heal. Very good. Well, it sounds like a fantastic platform. It's a story that we're going to keep watching going forward, and uh, we hope that you eventually end up, you know, on the north side of the border, and uh, you know, uh, users will have accessibility here. So uh, we'll, we'll be following your story coming uh, going forward. Thank you so much for joining the program. Thanks very much, guys. Pleasure. Thanks a lot.